Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a sugar text effect in Photoshop using custom brushes and some layer styles. Let's get started. So the first thing that you'll need is a background, and I found that darker ones work better. If you're a Panapass member, you can get this particular background in the project files. So our background is 1200 by 800 pixels, and the first thing that I want to do is find the center of my document. So I'm going to come over to my rulers, and if your rulers aren't showing, you can just toggle them with Control r So I'm going to drag those out into the middle until I see them snap into place. And now I have the center of my document. Next, I'm going to choose my Type tool and create my main text. So our text is just going to say, Sugary. And I'm using the font Lobster, and it's about 260 point in size. So now I'll just click and drag that into the center of my document and maybe nudge it around using my arrow keys. Once that's in place, I'm just going to press Control semicolon to hide my guides. Now before we go any further here, I need to create my sugar crystal brush. So I'm going to create a new document and it's going to be 50 by 50 pixels. And I want to make sure that the background is filled with black. Then I'll just come up and choose Edit, Define Brush Preset, and name that Sugar Crystals and hit OK. Then I can go ahead and close that document and you don't need to save it. So if I come over and select my brush tool and then open up my brush presets, you'll see that my brush is now available under my brush preset menu. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Then I'm going to move over to the brush panel. First I'm going to set the size to just 5 pixels. And you want to make sure that you have spacing checked with that set to 10%. Next I'll turn on Shape Dynamics and make sure my size jitter is set to 100% and that the three boxes down here are all checked. Then I'll turn on my scattering settings and I want my scatter set to about 250% and both axes checked. So I'm going to hide that for now. And now that my brush is set up, I'm going to have Photoshop automatically apply it to the outline of my text. So first I'll right click my text layer and choose Create Work Path. And I'll hide my original text layer to make it a little easier to see. Then I'll come over and choose my Path or Direct Selection tool, it doesn't matter which one. And then up here I'm going to click the Path Operations button and choose Merge Shape Components. And that's going to merge all the individual letter outlines into a single shape. Next I'll come down and create a new layer, and then I'll right click on my work path and choose Stroke Path. I'll choose my brush tool, that way we'll use the brush that we just set up previously, and hit OK. So if I press Ctrl H to toggle my work path on and off, you can see that I've created a bunch of squares around the outline of my word. Next I'll choose my brush tool again. And I'll just press the left square bracket key to size that down one pixel, so now my brush is sized at four pixels. Then I'll create a new layer again, and making sure that I have my path selection tool selected, I'll right click on my work path again and choose stroke path, and hit OK again. So I've done the same thing, only this time the sugar crystals are slightly smaller. So again, I'm going to come over and choose my brush tool, and this time under my brush panel, I want to change the scatter to 500%. Then again, I'll hit the left square bracket key so my brush is set to 3 pixels. So I'll create another new layer, choose my path selection tool, right click my work path and hit stroke path. I'm going to repeat this process one more time, except my brush is going to be 2 pixels. Next, I'm going to create another new layer and I'm going to choose my brush tool and then I'm going to press the right square bracket key to make it 3 pixels in size and this time I'm going to increase the scatter to a thousand percent and click brush tip shape and set the spacing all the way to a thousand percent too. So if I hide this now I can paint around the edges of my word and you'll see that it scatters some stray sugar crystals around my word. So I'm just going to click and paint a few stray crystals here. And now I'll apply some layer styles to make them look a little more 3D. So first I'll press Ctrl H to toggle my work path off so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to double click one of my layers in the layers panel to open the layer style dialog. 
So first I'm going to give him a color overlay and it's just going to be a really light gray. The hex code is just six E's. Next I'll add a bevel and emboss and that's going to be an inner bevel with the size set to zero and the angle set to 120 degrees and 30 degrees for the vertical. Then for the highlight mode I'll set that to linear dodge at 100% and the shadow mode to linear burn at 35%. Lastly I'll give it a drop shadow. So I want the blend mode set to multiply the opacity to 35% and both the distance and the size set to one pixel and hit OK. You won't see much of an effect yet, but that's because we need to copy these layer styles to all of our sugar crystal layers. So if I right click those effects in the layers panel, I can choose copy layer style and then holding shift, I'll click my bottom layer and then I can right click and paste those layer styles to all of my layers. Then I can alt click this arrow here to shrink those effects in the layers panel. Now you can see my sugar crystals are starting to look a little more realistic. I'm going to turn on my original text layer and then select it in the layers panel. I'll set the fill to 0% and then double click it to open the layer style dialog. And I'm just going to give this a slight inner shadow to make our text look a little more 3D. So I want the blend mode set to multiply, the opacity to 35%, the distance at 5 pixels and the size at 9 pixels. Then lastly I'll increase the noise to about 7% just to give the shadow a little bit of grit and hit OK. Now we need a tagline, so I'm going to come over and choose the type tool and click on my document. And our tagline is just going to say sweet treats at design panoply. And for this text, I'm going to use our very own font called Hensel. You can find Hensel under the font section of designpanoply.com. So I'm going to set the size to just 38 point and increase the tracking to about 50. Then I'll move that tagline text into place. Now I'll select my brush tool and go back into my brush panel. And I'm going to set the spacing back down to just 10%. And under scattering, I'm going to set the scatter amount to just 100%. Next I'll right click that text in the layers panel and again choose create work path. You might need to press Ctrl H to turn your work paths back on. So I'll hide that text layer, create a new blank layer, and then with my path selection tool, I'm going to right click on my canvas and choose stroke path. So again, if I press Ctrl H to hide that work path, you'll see that my tagline looks like it's made out of sugar as well. And again, I can right click that layer and paste those layer styles in since I had already copied them previously. Now our text effect is done, but I want to add a few more lighting effects to give it a more realistic look. So I'm going to click my top layer, and then add a curves adjustment layer. And you might notice that your work path gets selected as the vector mask for that curves adjustment layer. So I'm just going to right click that and delete that vector mask. And then come down and click this button here to add a layer mask. Then I'll select my brush tool and choose a soft round brush and hold the right bracket key to resize that a bit. And before I do anything here, I'm going to come up to my properties panel and click on this curves icon and drag the middle of this line down into the right to darken my image. Then back on the canvas, I'm going to paint with the color black in the layer mask of my curves adjustment. That way my curves adjustment only affects the outer edges. Next I'm going to come up and choose layer, new fill layer, gradient and it doesn't matter what name you give it and for the gradient I want it to go from white to black so I'm just going to choose the first one in our list and hit OK then I'll set the angle to 120 degrees and we want white to be in the top left and black to be in the bottom right so I'm going to click the reverse checkbox and hit OK then in the layers panel I'm going to set the blend mode for that gradient to overlay and the fill to 35% Lastly, I want to add a really subtle spotlight to my lighting effects. So I'm going to come over and choose my ellipse tool and click on my canvas. And I want this ellipse to be 400 by 400 pixels. Then with my selection tool, I'm going to move that just over the letter U. And if I come over to the properties panel, I can click the masks icon and set the feather of that ellipse to 75 pixels. Lastly, I'll change the blend mode for that to color dodge 
and the fill to just 10%. So if I toggle that layer on and off, you can see it's a really subtle effect. And that's it. This technique can be used to create all kinds of granular text effects like sugar, salt, sand, or even things like really small rocks. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.